Another year rolls around and we all kind of get our calendars and our journals out and set down a couple of goals. And oftentimes those are health goals and we have to be at 100% honest. Oftentimes it's weight loss goals. How many of you, I'm curious, are trying to lose weight in the new year or it's a part of your 2024 strategy or plan? Look, you're not alone. Everybody wants a reset and a new year is such a great opportunity for a reset. But here's what usually happens. You start a plan, you start a program, you might be motivated until, I think they have statistics on this, I think it might be until about January 28th and then everybody falls off the wagon. Well, how do we prevent that? I wanna to talk to you guys today a little bit about how to lose weight, what we need to be thinking about when we're gonna have a conversation around weight loss and how to have a conversation that's long lasting, not a short term fix. Look, I know, I write those scripts. I know so many of you want Ozempic and Wegovy and Lejourna and all these medications. There's a new one now, it's Zep Bound, Zep Bound. I knew I was gonna have it at the tip of my tongue, but it's the new, you know, sort of Majuro now approved for weight loss as well, but with a brand new name. So there's a lot of options out there. Are they all good? Absolutely not, and here's why. If you have that last 10 pounds or that last 20 pounds to lose, I'm not sure the medications are worth it unless you've tried some of these other strategies. And if you've tried and your head is against a wall and nothing's working, well, that's a different conversation, right? But the reason I have an issue with some of those medications is because they do impact gut health. And not only do they impact gut health, they work by slowing down motility, meaning how fast things are getting through your gut, which indirectly is making you feel full, so you eat less and less and less, and then many people just aren't hungry. And for those who have struggled with food noise and nighttime cravings, or maybe even hover a little bit on the border of binge eating disorder, where they're good all day, and then all of a sudden they eat everything in sight, or they have a day where they just wanna eat everything in sight, you know, these medications may be helping to cut some of those things down. But let's get into the chemistry and the physiology of what's happening here. And that might be helpful when you're trying to paint this overarching strategy around weight loss. All right, one of the things that I'd really like to dial into in this particular video is leptin. Leptin is the hormone that makes us feel full. And in the right amounts, it's the sweet spot, in the right amounts, leptin does its job, right? It's secreted and stimulated by the hypothalamus. It then influences the other hormones, tells them what to do, tells us that we're full, turns it off, and we're pretty good until its sister hormone ghrelin presents itself and tells us that if we're hungry and it's time to eat again. Now, when leptin and ghrelin are in the right place, the hunger feeding cycle is very rhythmic usually around every four or five hours. We don't binge eat, we don't overeat, and we're also not doing all kinds of crazy fasting. But when that leptin or ghrelin is off, right, gets dysregulated for a number of different reasons, and we'll break those down in a minute, then the whole hunger feeding cycle is completely disrupted and you're either hungry all the time or not hungry at all, you don't feel full, your satiety centers are not sort of clued in and you've eaten maybe two meals when you should have just eaten one meal and weight and weight loss continues to be a challenge. So let's get into the chemistry of how leptin works and how it plays a role in the conversation around weight loss. So leptin is actually released from fat tissue or fat cells. And as leptin is released, it signals the hypothalamus to really get the other hormones on board in terms of doing what they're supposed to do. Specifically, leptin works with TRH, which is a hormone actually involved in the thyroid, but influenced by leptin directly. So as leptin levels are in a good place, your thyroid's working well, your blood sugar's working well, everything's coming along perfectly. But when we get too much leptin, right, there's a lot of fat cells, you're having an outpouring of leptin, and those levels get really high, then it is impacting TRH secretion and suppressing the thyroid to a certain extent and impacting all the other hormones as well. When leptin gets super low, then we have this issue where you simply don't feel like you're hungry and you don't wanna eat and you are full pretty quickly. So low leptin and high leptin both act in a very similar way on the body, triggering different forms or versions of leptin resistance. 
and that's what makes us hold on to weight. When leptin levels are in the wrong place, not only is it an issue about how much we're taking in, but it's also an issue about inflammation. So there ends up being a ton of inflammation in the body and the other hormones can't keep up. So when you're having a conversation with yourself about how to lose weight, I think understanding where your leptin levels are may be a first step before you do anything. Because if your leptin levels are super high, well then that's a very specific plan and we're gonna talk about it. If they're super low, that's another plan. And if they're in the right place and you're just stuck with those last 10 pounds to lose, that's a little bit of a different conversation. All right, my high leptin community, high leptin for me is a number over 20. When your leptin levels are above that, then you're going into this issue with leptin resistance. For those folks, they are not aware of when they're full or when to stop eating. So there are a couple of things that need to happen in terms of a weight loss plan. Number one, keep a 12 hour fast, but not longer than that. Otherwise there will be blood sugar instability. Number two, work on eating every four hours, getting about 20 to 30 grams of protein in every four hours. It helps to manage the blood sugar, but it also prevents overeating and excessive amounts of protein or fat or any of these foods that can make leptin resistance worse. Next, make sure to sort of get rid of all the processed and packaged foods because our goal is to really regulate the hormones and many of these preservatives and additives and toxins actually make hormone regulation, blood sugar regulation, and leptin signaling worse. So those are really your first three steps. And as you're doing that, I would seek to normalize leptin levels. Now, of course, we wanna keep you moving, keep you active, but with a super high leptin level, remember there's a lot of inflammation. So going out there and doing HIT and aggressive workouts, you know, are okay maybe once or twice a week, but if you're doing them day in and day out, then you might actually be making your leptin resistance worse because your inflammation's already high, your blood sugar is high, and you're perpetuating the cycle of cortisol, feeling hungry and not full, and then having high blood sugar and high insulin. So those are your first three starting steps if you have high leptin. Now, do, following those simple three steps, if your leptin levels are not coming down in the span of four to six weeks, well, that's when you probably need to step it up. And that could look like a couple of different things. You may need thyroid hormone to help your overall metabolism and your metabolic rate. You might need some supplemental berberine or metformin to stabilize your blood sugar. You might need some support in terms of cutting down food noise. And I talked a lot about food noise and insulin resistance in this video right here. You might wanna check it out. So those are your next steps. If you're doing that and you're still stuck, well, that's when one of these medications may be appropriate, especially if your leptin levels are not coming down because you're just having too much trouble in that feedback loop of shutting off hunger or shutting off feeling full or understanding where you're full and then in turn regulating your food and getting the body to burn energy when it's already in a high sugar and high inflammatory state. So yes, for those folks, if they've laid that foundation, if that's not happening for them, well, maybe those medications are something to think about, but with support, adding in something like glutamine or my belly fix to rebuild the gut lining, using digestive enzymes to help break foods down so you're still absorbing the nutrients, even though those medications are slowing down motility. Now let's flip gears for just a minute as we're thinking and talking about weight loss in the new year. What about your leptin levels being too low? Well, oftentimes leptin levels are too low because you're just not eating it up. You've learned to shut off your hunger satiety clues so you don't feel hungry and you often feel full. That's problematic as well because here's what happens after a long period of time of doing that. You actually drop your metabolic rate. And so your set point for burning energy gets lower and lower and lower and you're simply not burning the calories even at rest that you should be. What do you do? Well, here's an opportunity to really change your eating and movement plans, which you're going to have to put yourself on a schedule. You need to eat every three to four hours. And you do, again, need to get the protein in, but also get in fiber and lots of healthy nutrients, right? A lot of those high glutathione foods, those antioxidants, to flood your cells to build energy back up. 
Many of my patients with low leptin have had a trauma or an eating disorder or an injury, something that forced leptin levels to come down. So your weight loss plan is very different and you absolutely don't need the medications. They're actually gonna make everything worse because we have to reset your metabolism. All right, what about the in-between folks? So if you're at that last 10 pounds and your leptin levels are totally normal, what are you supposed to do? I would say focus on two things. Focus on healthy hormone balancing. So let's make sure your thyroid, your estrogen to progesterone ratios are where they need to be. You're getting deep and consistent sleep. And next, we really wanna pay attention to the blood sugar. So I would invest or get one of the glucometers, whether it's the continuous glucose monitor, the Freestyle Libre or a Dexcom, because that's gonna help you understand what behaviors might be causing your blood sugar levels to go above 80 or so, which is keeping you in the state of storing or holding on to those last 10 pounds, rather than getting rid of them and being able to sort of drop the weight no matter your best efforts. So hopefully that's all helpful information, but we're grounding it and wrapping it around leptin because leptin is secreted by fat cells, works with the hypothalamus and the pituitary in terms of influencing all the other hormones and using leptin as a guide can help you dial into the weight loss plan for you. When we guess and check, right? I'm gonna try this and see what happens and try this and see what happens. That often leads to more frustration. And for those of you that choose to use one of the medications, remember if we can get that leptin level back down to its sweet spot, that's where we can start to wean the medication and slowly get you off rather than keeping you on it indefinitely as some doctors have suggested. Okay, I hope this is super helpful in terms of thinking about a novel way or a different way to manage your weight story and also game plan your path to weight loss rather than falling into the one size fits all sort of routine that we're all really tired of hearing. All right, I post new videos every week. Don't forget to like and subscribe.